miso yaki. Let me translate that for you. You already know what the miso part is. Yaki means to grill. And we're gonna do a miso yaki fish. And it all starts with the marinade. I've got straight sake, which is rice wine, and I've got sweetened sake, which is mirin. We're gonna make sure the pan's not too hot. I'm gonna pour a little bit in. Excellent. And again, remember, cold pan when you're adding alcohol in there. And since this is alcohol as well, I'm gonna add the mirin straight in. I want you to think about it as sugar. It's sweet, it's got a really nice aroma to it. We want this to come to a boil because we wanna cook off all the alcohol. Okay, the sake mixture has come to a nice boil and all the alcohol is cooked off. Now it's time to finish up the marinade for the miso yaki using white miso and ginger. You wanna start by grating the ginger so it's smooth and free of fibers. Then we'll add the miso to the sake. I like to pair miso with foods kind of like the way you pair wine, so white miso is perfect for the fish. Then we'll add the ginger and finally some sugar, which will help create the glaze. Once this simmers for a few minutes, we'll be ready for the fish. I've got some black cod here. You might see it on your shelves as sable fish also. The fishmonger is always going to give you that choice. Well, which piece would you like? As an informed person, as a really good cook, you're gonna say, I want that top piece. So he's gonna cut that off and then give you this front piece. This is the piece you absolutely want every single time. So taking your fish, you're gonna actually apply a 45 degree angle to that first cut. I'm just gonna slide the knife, let the knife do all the work. The first piece isn't gonna look great. The second, third, fourth are gonna look fantastic. So following that same angle now, let's make my second cut and then slide it through. And let's lay these out evenly. By doing this cut, you're also gonna get really even pieces, which is gonna assure even cooking on the grill. Beautiful. We want this at room temperature. You never wanna marinate fish in warm marinade. So the marinade has been separated out into a bowl that's been cooled completely, but you really want full coverage on this. Let's think about these flavors. We've got the miso, we've got the ginger, we've got the sugar. If that looks like a lot of marinade, because it's supposed to be, what's gonna happen here is when fish or any kind of meat sits in marinade, what happens is something called equilibrium. The flavor of all the miso and the sugar is gonna go into the fish and all the moisture is gonna come out of it. So it's not just marinating it on the inside, it's actually going right in, so it's gonna taste like miso all the way through. This is ready to go. I'm gonna put this in the fridge because fish you never wanna keep out, you wanna keep this Cold. Turn the grill on now to get it nice and preheated. Leave that to high, let it start to come up because we know we have a little time before we get the fish on there. Speaking of fish, let's grab the fish. Now you know you're in a good place when you kind of see this kind of color variance. Some of it's dark from the marinade and some of it's light. So the marinade's actually penetrated, it's in a good place. I'm gonna put this plate next to it to get it ready for the grill. Having too much marinade on the fish on the grill will actually start spark overs and actually burn spots in the grill. So let's get some paper towels to clean this up. All right, let's get this fish ready. I'll take a couple clean paper towels and we'll dab the extra marinade. Trust me, there's gonna be more than enough flavor inside this fish. We'll just do a little clamshell, just a little pat and open and that's gonna be just enough marinade to go on the grill. And we'll do that to all four of these pieces. Now I like using kind of the paper towels because they get to go away and uh, it keeps us from cross contaminating. Three pieces down, one more. Excellent. Now I've just touched raw fish, so I'm gonna do a really quick hand wash while uh, my fish is just sitting. Excellent. So how to prep the grill. The grill's been actually going for a few minutes here. Now I'm gonna show you how to tell when it's time to actually put the fish on. There's no visual indicator yet. That's why we're gonna grab some oil. Here we go. Grill is hot. I'm gonna put a few drops on it, just a few. And the way to move that around is either a paper towel or getting these silicone little brushes are gonna be nice because I wanna distribute that oil over the area where we're gonna be grilling the fish. Beautiful. I'm gonna watch this to see slight movement on the oil. When the oil starts to kind of dance, I know this grill's really hot. If you're cooking this on an outdoor grill, at the fish height, you should be able to put your hand there for about four seconds. And that's when you know it's ready to go. So I'm happy where I am here. Let's put down that first piece of fish. Now, do you see the lines on the grill? They kind of run one way. I'm gonna show you how to get these really beautiful restaurant marks. What we'll do is we're gonna go 45 degree to the line of the grill, just like that. And you hear that sound? 
That's what you want to hear. That means the grill's at that perfect temperature to start searing off the fish. Now again, 45 degree. That's gonna give me beautiful kind of cross or hatch marks on this, and it'll look like a beautiful piece of fish. These need to grill for about four minutes. So Black Cod's been on the grill for a few minutes, and now we're gonna put the cross hatch marks in this. So watch what happens. It's gonna go from 145 to the other 45. And that's how you're gonna get a really professional looking X in all your protein. This will work for your steaks, it'll work for your chicken as well. I'm gonna peek under this and look and see if it's ready to turn. So I'm gonna turn one piece over and I've got one good mark there. Let's check these fish. Turn over, nice, I've got a nice mark there. And again, I'm getting my turner right under. Very nice. Last piece, excellent, good. So I've cooked it probably about 60 to 70% on one side. There's no rule in cooking that says you have to cook 50 on one side, 50 on the other. You can actually do you know, 60, 40, 70, 30. It's really about getting to that perfect point of doneness. And you know, if you're a visual chef, like a lot of you are, you wanna get a nice mark on there. So I know I'm about two minutes out, let's start the plate up. If you touch this fish and it bounces back to the touch, you know it's firm, it's good. It's right at that point where it should be plated. You shouldn't take it any further. Grab a plate, turning off the grill. I'm gonna get right under it. I'll put three down. For this one, let's see. You know what, I like that look of fanning it out a little bit. And that one that has a little piece kind of knocked off of it, I'm saving that for myself to eat before I take it to my guests. All right, grill's off, fish is done. Let's put some rice on this because fish is a protein. You really want a nice starch, so I've made a little bit of brown rice to go with this. And you know that reserved marinade? We didn't quite use all of our marinade. I'm gonna actually use this to kind of garnish the plate and really make that fish pop a little bit. So I'm probably not gonna do any more than about a cup. That's a good serving. That's a really healthy, actually, entree serving. So let's take this over and kind of, you know, make this look even nicer. This is that reserved marinade that's cooked through. It's never touched any raw product. Always keep a little bit to kind of paint on your fish to really kind of liven it up, give it a little extra flair and a little couple drops on the rice if you want. 